This is a response to Mike the Vegan's video called Alan Savory's Five Big Lies. This is my first YouTube video ever, so I won't be nearly as good at presenting as, Ms. as Mike is. Hopefully my facts will speak for themselves though. Mike starts off with lie number one. Mike claims that Alan Savory's methods aren't proven or that they are even disproven in the scientific literature. He's wrong, although there is a lot of resistance within the community to Alan's ideas the bulk of the evidence is still in his favor. Let's look at each of Mike's arguments. First, uh, Mike cites two articles. The first says that, quote, no peer-reviewed studies show that the holistic management approach is superior to conventional grazing systems and outcomes. And the second article says something similar. It says there is a lack of conclusive evidence on measurable benefits of holistic management grazing. If these articles are true, then how come I was able to find so many peer-reviewed articles supporting holistic management? Let's take a look at them. The first is called Desertification and Livestock Grazing, the Roles of Sedentarization, Mobility, and Rest. And it states that, quote, inclusive planning processes like holistic management are one step towards improving rangeland ecosystems through the use of livestock as a solution to the problem of land degradation. The next is called Methane Emissions of Beef Cattle on Forages, Efficiency of Grazing Management Systems. And it concludes that annual methane emissions in cows reflect a 22% reduction from management intensive grazing when compared with continuous grazing in this study. And that study did not take into account carbon or methane sequestration in the soil, but we'll talk about that later. Third, we have greenhouse gas mitigation potential of different grazing strategies in the United States Southern Great Plains, which found that multi-paddock grazing sequestered two tons of carbon per hectare per year compared with conventional continuous grazing. And that is accounting for all methane and carbon emissions released by the cattle themselves. They concluded that cow-calf farms converting from continuous to multi-paddock grazing in the Southern Great Plains region are likely net carbon sinks for decades. The fourth, ar fourth article I found is called Effective Grazing on Soil Water Content in Semi-Arid Rangelands of Southeast Idaho. This study found that holistic planned grazing resulted in higher soil water content and more soil cover compared to other grazing methods. The fifth article I've come across is called Grazing Management Impacts on Vegetation, Soil Biota, and so chemical, physical, and hydrological properties in tall grass prairie. And this article found that multi-paddock grazing was superior in numerous ways to both conventional grazing and to no grazing at all. The next one was a very large study done of thousands of ranchers in Canada during the mad cow epidemic. It surveyed over 800 Canadian holistic managers and compared them to their conventional counterparts and found that they were adapting to the crisis much better. Another article in the International Journal of Environmental Science and Development states that holistic management in ethnic communities of Mexico has a huge potential to combat climate change and increase the sustainability of these communities. Another study in Mexico developed a compre comprehensive sustainability index uh, to analyze different land management practices and found that this sustainability sustainability index doubled when holistic management was applied with more wildlife, biodiversity, and tree cover. Now the next study I found called Managing the Grazing land site, Landscape Insights for Agricultural Adaption from a Mid-Drought Photo Elicitation in the Australian Wheat Belt found that HM, as in Holistic Management Grazier Landscape perceptions demonstrated how they considered the stewardship of biodiversity, farm heterogeneity, and system resilience to be fundamental to their long-term agricultural production and almost a duty in light of increasing climate variability. These landscape perceptions appear to be conducive to adaptive management behavior. However, Mike specifically mentions this study in his video saying that the authors failed to recognize that a study they cited did not actually find more soil organic carbon like they claim. So I did, a, I did a bit of digging and read the study that was in dispute. I found a single reference to one of their measurements of soil organic carbon that they said was statistically insignificant. 
while the rest of the article overwhelmingly supported the use of what they referred to as time-controlled grazing. Their trial showed an increase in soil organic carbon, nitrogen, uh, ground litter accumulation, and no compaction compared with continuous grazing. Nitrate and extractable phosphorus concentrations were reduced, which in turn decreased the contamination potential for downstream water bodies. Uh, Time-controlled grazing is not planned grazing, it's not holistic management, but it is a step in the right direction. Um, unfortunately, without the planning process and with the long grazing period that they used in this study, which was 9 to 14 days, uh, the results are probably inferior to what most holistic managers are achieving. Mike also talks about this study in his section on climate change, but we'll leave that for later. The next study I found is called Emerging Land, Uses pra Emerging Land Use Practices Rapidly Increase Soil Organic Matter. It found that within a decade of management intensive grazing practices, soil carbon levels returned to those of native forest soils. And another st uh, survey I found of 25 holistic ranchers uh, in the USA, which was published in Agriculture, Ecosystems and Environment found that 95% of them observed increases in biodiversity, 80% observed increases in their profits, and 91% reported improvements in their quality of life since adopting holistic management. There are more studies I could go into. Um, a really good one is called uh, Why Scientific Studies Are Failing to Match the Results Reported by Rand. Okay. Besides all of these studies, there are tons of videos you can view online which show the benefits of holistic management. There's a large collection of case studies collected by Holistic Management International of tons of ranchers, um, mainly in North America. There are lots of books uh, talking about holistic management, documenting the results, talking about how it works. And of course, there are tons of comparison photos, um, which of course, they aren't, they aren't conclusive evidence, but some of them are pretty compelling anyways. Um, but none of this is foolproof evidence. Uh, I'd suggest that the only way to know for sure for yourself if holistic management works is to go and see it for yourself. Uh, there are tens of thousands of holistic managers around the world, um, lots in North America. Um, and if you want to visit someone nearby, I would recommend searching holistic management internationals directory of holistic managers. Find someone close to you and if they're not that close, uh, email the closest person and ask them if they know anyone near you. Chances are you'll be able to find someone in your area. And just go out and uh, see it for yourself. Ask hard questions. Compare their land and animals to the people around them. Next on the list, uh, Mike talks about a study called Short Duration short duration grazing, the facts in 1999. And he also talks about a study of 50 sites in Africa called short duration grazing research in Africa. These studies have many disparaging things to say about short duration grazing and Alan Savory, including that short duration grazing increased soil erosion, reduced infiltration, and was less productive. Now these two articles have already been refuted several times, and a summary of those refutations can be found here. It's called Correcting Misconceptions about the Supposed Discrediting of Savory's Approach, in case you want to look it up for yourself. But basically the biggest flaw with these articles is that short duration grazing is not at all the same as holistic management or even holistic planned grazing. This can be difficult for people who aren't really familiar with holistic management to understand and the oversimplifications Alan was forced to use in his TED talk unfortunately uh, increased this confusion. So what is holistic management? It's not a grazing system. In fact, it doesn't even require animals. Holistic management is a decision-making process uh, and it helps to ensure that decisions are environmentally, socially, and economically sound all at the same time. It can be used by any organization or individual to make decisions, livestock or land are not required. Now holistic planned grazing is one of the tools offered within holistic management and if a, if a land manager determines that livestock 
are appropriate for their social, environmental, and economic situation, then they can use holistic planned grazing to get really good results with their livestock. Uh, holistic planned grazing is a process for planning the grazing which takes into account all of the complexity involved. Uh, grazing animals on the land, managing land, has tons of complexity. There's, there's the soil, different soil types, different vegetation, there's the seasons, there's different weather patterns that are always changing, there's all the people involved, there's all the finances involved, there's wildlife, there's regulations. So holistic planned grazing gives the manager a way to actually account for all of that complexity. And then, so a plan is made on a grazing chart, and then throughout the season, everything, the land is monitored, the animals are monitored, and the plan is changed as necessary. Now compare that to a short duration grazing or intensive rotational grazing or other grazing systems like that. What happens in, in those grazing systems is the manager determines at the start of the year, I'm going to move here, here, and here at this time to this place. And that's what they do. And it doesn't at all account for any of that complexity. So those systems can produce reasonably good results in humid environments, which are pretty forgiving, but they almost always fail in brittle environments. Uh, in brittle environments, any mistake can spell disaster for the land or the livestock or the operation. So the authors of those two studies uh, did not understand holistic management or holistic planned grazing. That might have been deliberate, I don't know. Uh, maybe they just saw all these holistic managers who had their livestock bunched and moving and assumed that was all there was to it. Unfortunately, Mike the Vegan has made the same mistake, uh, and he's also failed to understand holistic planned grazing. Uh, that's okay. It's understandable. He's not a rancher, and he's never gone through the process. He's never uh, had a herd of livestock to manage. Um, so it can be hard to understand for outsiders what the difference is between these grazing systems. Now, out of everything in those two studies, there was one one uh, trial that was of planned grazing. It was called the Charter Grazing Trials. Uh, this trial was first published in 19... 84. So it was early in Savior's career before he had developed holistic management and the decision-making process and before he had fully refined planned grazing. So the results aren't the same as what would happen today. Anyways, in this study, Allen set out to prove only that his method was financially superior to the common grazing methods of the day and could withstand drought because ranchers in Rhodesia and South Africa were doubting his claims. And he succeeded in that goal. His method showed between a 6% and 26% increase in income compared to the other systems, as well as a 29 to 40% increase in beef production. His goal in this situation wasn't to regenerate the land without using any supplemental feed. He could have done that. Many ranchers have done that, but that wasn't what he was trying to accomplish in this situation. You can't judge holistic management in general by that one specific trial.